Greetings. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about critical spare parts in power plants and in chemical manufacturing plants. We'll talk about a system to identify what parts you have, how critical they are, and then how to manage the risks that go along with those criticalities. That's right. They clicked on it and the spare parts can get confusing after a while. So let's get into it. First off, we want to classify these parts, right? We want to figure out just how important they are. So let's look at it from a standpoint of a few tiers. Let's look at three tiers. And that way we can organize these things in, in some fashion so that we can understand them. So we'll get a master list of all our components and all of our equipment in the facility. And then we're going to analyze the failure data, such as the mean time between failures and maintenance records. We're going to look at maintenance reports just basically to figure out some information about all this equipment. And what we're going to look for are the equipment that has high failure rates or limited lifespans for whatever reason. Or if they're essential for critical equipment that uh, it could cost the unit downtime, we're going to look at that. If there are long lead times for procurement, those are things that are going to interest us. And if we can't easily substitute other pieces and parts, then we're going to identify these. So tier one is going to be what is critical to the plant operation, safety, for example, the main turbines, critical pumps, safety systems. Tier two would be important, but we've got redundancy or we've got workarounds available. So we'd look at that. And tier three, they're going to be non-critical support equipment. All right, then let's uh, go on. So we want to create a matrix linking the spare parts to their associated equipment. We're going to have the primary equipment association. We're going to find out if there's any cross compatibility, like we might be able to use the same kind of packing on pumps in different systems. We're going to look at what part family the uh, piece is, and we're going to look at current inventory levels. This gives you an idea of what this matrix would look like, but basically we're going to have the equipment ID, the description, the tier that it is, and then the process area and whether it's redundant or not, comments. So then we want to score how critical this equipment is. So we're going to build a system and this is uh, something that you can use or something that you can modify, feel free. We're going to have an equipment impact, an EI, and the score is going to be from one to 10. So if that equipment could shut down the entire plant, it's going to be a 10. If it could be a major production loss, if we could lose more than 50% of the output, we're going to score it somewhere between 7 and 9 based on judgment. Partial production loss would be 10 to 50%. We're going to score it 4 to 6. Minimal impact, less than 10% production loss, 1 to 3 is going to be our score. Now, some folks might say if there's any business impact or any production loss, then we're going to give it more than a 1 or 3. Now let's look at lead times. How important are the lead times in what we're doing? Well, let's score them. If it takes longer than six months, give it a 10. That's a long time for it to be shut down. Three to six months, let's make it seven to nine, four to six, well, one to six, let's give it one to three months, make it a four to six. Less than a month, score it a one to three. Here's what that chart would look like. So in this case, I want you to focus in on this max lead time over here. Basically, we're going to look at the part number, its description, what production impact it would have if it failed, the daily loss revenue, and then other costs associated, maybe the in and out cost type, the total impact, and then again, this uh, max lead time, because that's what's going to drive the uh, overall potential impact. And you see on the right hand side that 225 million, this helps the uh, CFO of your company figure out whether you need to buy a spare set of turbine blades. Now, some other things that we can think about is uh, the number of suppliers we have to get them. If it's only a one sole supplier, then, you know, it's going to make it very uh, important. It's going to be a, a more of a critical piece of equipment or part. And is it custom? Was it straight off the shelf? Was it stock? Or did they have to modify it to fit our plant? What about the geographical location of the suppliers? There was a period in the United States where we could only get power transformers, the large GSUs, from overseas, either rebuilt, refurbished, or rewound. So that drives how critical a component would be here if it takes a, a lot of uh, resources to get one from foreign suppliers. And then we're going to look at historical procurement challenges. Is there a period of time during the year that makes it more difficult to get certain products or not? Uh, now we're going to look at the business impact 
cost. And we're going to score this a 1 to 10 again. The daily cost of business interruption. So if our facility is worth a million dollars a day, we're going to have a 10. And if we're somewhere between half and a million a day, you're down the line. Less than 100,000, 1 to 3. Now we're going to finally get to the criticality index. We're going to put all these numbers together. And we've got equipment, procurement, and business, right? So there's an equipment index, a procurement uh, cost, and then our business impact cost. And we're going to weight those. If you notice, these all have a fraction, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So it, it all totals up to one. But basically, you can shift that so that you have 40% of the weight going to the equipment. Or you can move it over to the business impact and make that 40%. This is up to your judgment. Here's what it'll look like, which you'll have is the part, the description, the impact, so that anybody can go in and see what the three factors were, which led to this criticality index, and then the category of whether it's critical, high, or medium. And so the criticality index is also something that will help us prioritize within a category between those two high items. You see one's a little bit more critical than the other. How do we treat the different criticalities, right? Once we've done this? Well, if it's more than an eight, we want to maintain some of it in stock. We want to develop multiple suppliers if possible. Anywhere between a six and a 7.9, we want to have it on stock and we want to have some rapid supply agreements, contingency plans. We talk about this for cooling towers and for transformers. You may not have the, the funds to have a transformer or spare cooling tower, but you can have rapid supply agreements where you've already written out all the specifications you know exactly what you need to order you don't have to spend the first two weeks of a catastrophe figuring out what you need to order and buy you can just go out and start ordering it you've already got agreements with some of the vendors and and that's one way to handle the, the high but not critical equipment medium you want to evaluate that on a case by case and then if it's low you'll just use your standard purchasing procedures now, how are we going to do this? We're going to create the master list and the tier classifications. We're going to identify and catalog all the spare parts. We're going to assign initial scores and use the uh, available data. And then we're going to calculate baseline criticality indices. How do we ensure that it's current after we've done that initial work? Well, we're going to have frequency-based reviews, and then we'll talk about some other reviews. But quarterly, we're going to look at everything that's over an eight in the criticality index. And if it's a high criticality, we're going to look at it semi-annually. And if it's medium and low, we'll look at those annually. This gives you an idea of what that tracking sheet will look like. You can see we've got the part number, what the description is again, how critical it is. The last time we reviewed it, the next time we need to review it, what review type it is, and then action items that we have from those reviews and what the status of the reviews are. So there we go. That's how we keep these things current based on frequencies. Now there's some events that could trigger the reviews. Maybe if we made a major equipment modification, significant supplier changes, notable procurement issues, production impact incidents. So these things, if something happens, we may trigger a review to, to look at what our critical information is. Hiring PhDs to reformulate this is very uh, interesting. We had a chemical manufacturer who uh, suffered the uh, consequences of losing their supply chain during the winter storm early a few years ago, and they would buy raw materials that would be formulated into their products that they would sell to customers. Well, they couldn't get those uh, raw materials in anymore, so they hired PhD scientists that could reformulate what they needed based on what materials were available in the marketplace. So that was a very creative way to manage the business interruption impact. And it was to really be able to just change your process on the fly. Very creative way to do it. Data management. We're going to integrate this with our uh, computer management maintenance system. And we're going to keep a simplified spreadsheet for showing the insurance companies or for having meetings where we can't just uh, pull things up on the screen or we don't really need to run the CMMS. All right. And that type of report is going to be useful if the risk engineers come in from the insurance companies to provide. It'll look something like this. We'll provide the, the part number, the description, an equipment ID, which you can go out in the plant and see a tag on it to know what you're looking at. Know that is that piece of equipment, how long it's going to take to, to order and procure that equipment, how many we have in stock now, what the minimum stocking level is, how much they cost, 
who's the supplier, who's the alternate supplier. If you show this to your insurance risk engineers, they're going to be able to incorporate that into your risk engineering reports and you'll get credit for it in the underwriting process. And it does help, especially if you're buying business interruption insurance and they see that you've gone through this trouble to manage your own risk, because that's what you're really doing is you're trying to get back up and online before any of the insurance provisions have to kick in. What do we need to keep track of? Equipment ID, description, part numbers, current criticality index, last review, key suppliers, standard lead time, minimum stock levels, some optional data. We can list alternate suppliers, cross compatibility, historical procurement times if we've run into issues. With that, let me say thank you. This one was short and sweet. Hopefully this works for all of you out there that have moderate risk, criticality, spare parts, problems to solve, not necessarily for the big companies that are already doing this. This is great for the companies that have one facility and haven't really thought about it before. So take a look at it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks again.